I'm Bennett Hennessy. I'm Chella Borsma. And we're here at the Barbasol Nature Reserve. This is an update for 2021. We're here in April after being here uh, last September and we're sort of evaluating the projects. So Chari, I'm sure people are wondering what's going on with COVID in Bolivia and Barbasol. It has been a very difficult year in 2020. Very little was going on with tourism. Of course, no, nobody was able to travel to Bolivia. Uh, we closed Barbasol Nature Reserve and we hope to reopen somewhere around June this year to have again tourists come over uh, that are vaccinated. Um, but we were still able to actually do quite a lot of activities. We have been able to continue our protection activities. We have been uh, completing uh, some of the activities or, or, or uh, construction construction activities at the dining facility. We finished the deck. Uh, we've been constructing furniture for the cabins and the dining. We've been doing the buff breasted sandpiper monitoring. We've been creating all the fire breaks that were necessary to implement in Barbasul. So even though it was a very difficult year, we were able to do a lot. Through the COVID lockdown period, did that affect the reserve as far as protection? No. We didn't have hunting, uh, it is, we, we were able to control fire, so we didn't have the most important area to protect and conserve the blue throat of Macaw affected by, mm. by COVID. No, we were able to mm. implement all the protection uh, activities necessary to continue our conservation activities. Yeah. So one of, one of the sort of benefits is we are moving towards having a lot of tourists here, but we still aren't really there. So by not having any tourists last year, it really didn't affect our management budget that much. And we are ready and we're getting, doing all the little fixings and things so that we will definitely be ready by this year and definitely by next year. We're moving towards sustainably managing um, Barbasol Nature Reserve through different means of profit. One is tourism, it's, it's, we're, we're prepared, but it's not there yet. But we're also working, developing a cattle. What, how, how have you been developing on cattle so far? Last year was really good. We're really making that start towards the sustainable cattle ranching that we want to implement in Barbasul East, a section just dedicated for, for cattle ranching, where we've been able to purchase around 300 head of cattle, uh, specific uh, cows that are adapted to this ecosystem, that are um, strong, heavy, and that are helping the reserve with, with the sustainability. Right. And we're going to explain to you how cattle can be an ecological solution for a private reserve in an upcoming video. Um, okay, I'm going to get out of the scene and Charlie's going to tell you some changes that we're doing in Barbasul Nature Reserve. Let me introduce you to Luz Natalia Mercado, who is the new Barbasul Nature Reserve coordinator who started working for Armonia since March this year. And she is taking over the role I have had for Armonia the last six years. Um, so Luz, what, uh, we're here now in Barbasul. What have we been doing for the last uh, week? We've been the last week uh, training the new park guards in terms of tourism, uh, patrolling, uh, uh, monitoring of the blue throated macaw and yeah it's been a very intense week because we have new people, I'm new myself here and we're learning about uh, all the work uh, Harmonia has been doing uh, in the reserve. Uh, so we've been also um, learning how to use camera traps so we are monitoring all the time what is happening and with wildlife in the in the reserve and we're also planning to do to keep doing the work of protecting habitat here uh, with fire breaks this year so yeah we're going to make um, well maintain the fire breaks that we have already at the reserve but also we are going to make a back burn so to improve the protection of those fire breaks and at the same time we're going to experiment a bit with different um, patch burnings and to continue to know what how biodiversity will be affected by these different uh, grasses and H class grasses. So what type of monitoring will we be doing here in Barbasul this year? So with the park cars we are going to be monitoring weekly uh, the numbers of blue throat macaw individuals that, that we see 
uh, going from the Isla Barbasul to different locations uh, around. So we are going to count uh, through the year how many blue throttle macaws are coming and going inside the reserve. And this is uh, a weekly uh, task that park guards are are going to be doing well this year. So we're in April right now. Um, how many macaws have you been observing? So the monitoring during this week, we were able to count 41 uh, blue throw macaws. And actually that is a really good number. Uh, so yeah, we're pretty excited. That was our first monitoring as a, as a team. And this is very interesting because the macaws are here during the dry season and from October, November, they're all leaving Barbasu for approximately four months. So from March onwards, we see groups of macaws returning to Barbasu. So the par guards who were here from January until April were observing around four, six, eight, max 12 individuals. And this, this week's monitoring resulted in 41. So it's literally the macaws are arriving from their breeding grounds back to Barbasu. And we should be seeing lots of individuals or uh, juveniles as well, uh, recruiting the population here at Barbasu. So are we also monitoring other types of species? And how, how do we monitor other types of species? We have set three camera traps to monitor uh, different wildlife at the reserve. So uh, the new park guard is a biologist, so he's really interested and we're all interested to actually uh, implement a systemic uh, way to monitor uh, this, using these devices. We have set these cameras in three different ecosystems to actually uh, see how wildlife may be changing or maybe increasing in abundance so, so we can evaluate uh, our protection effort. 